Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Ladies and gentlemen, today again we are getting into the uh, new lecture uh, concept of the descriptive statistics and specifically the title is descriptive statistics and we are looking at the graphical tools. Okay. And remember in the previous lecture we have already talked about three aspects to determine which statistical test okay, to use. The three one number one was your independent variable, okay. number two was your dependent variable and number three was your descriptive statistics. And when we say statistical test, think about it as an arithmetic tool, you can think about it as an arithmetic tool for the time being. Okay. So, what we are trying to do today in this class is we will try to see a little bit of descriptive stats okay. and one of the simplest tools that we are going to see in this case. So, this is the uh, ninth lecture of your this course and uh, we will start by looking at why graphical tools. Okay. Obviously, uh, someone wise person once said a picture is worth a thousand words. This is very true, especially when it comes in the statement of statistics. I could possibly say that I can modify this and say that a picture is worth 1000 data tables or something like that or data values. Okay. So, graphical tools really help you to you know help you to visualize the data. And I said earlier data comes in two forms number one too much of data number 2, too little of data. This is very true when it comes in the practitioner's case. Okay. This is always true in practical scenarios. You will never get the right set of data. You have either too much of it or you have too little of it. So, then you have to play around with it. Okay. So, once you gather the data okay, and as I said earlier, you can you gather data on the dependent variable. Why? Because by collecting this data, you are trying to find the to find the effect of independent variable. Okay. So, due to that, so once you collect the data, then what? Then what do you do? Okay. So, gather data must be described and analyzed. Gather data must be described and analyzed to produce produce summary information. So, once you collect the data and then what you have to do it you have to must be described and analyzed. You should describe the data and analyze the data through which you will end up producing what you call as a summary information. So, once you have summary information then what? Then 
the best way to display the summary information or best way to communicate the summary information is using a graphical representation. Okay? So, the most effective way, way of communicating the summary information This is what we call as the graphical representation. So, you know, if uh, you say that the uh, total budget of a, so let us consider that uh, budget of a uh, college, okay. Let us say this is, if somebody says the total budget is divided into, let us say 20 percent for uh, salary. Uh, 20 percent for research, 30 percent for equipment, uh, so the, and then 10 percent for uh, maintenance, okay, something like this, okay, and then the rest of the 20 percent for profit. Let us say you think about a scenario like this, then displaying this in a pie chart would actually this is like 20, 20 and then you have like 30 and then 10 and 20 something like this. So, you basically say that okay fine these are the equal portions of the budget and these are the two large areas. So, you can think about this as a pie chart which is an easy way of displaying this information to somebody which tells you the relative budget spending on each other thing rather than looking at a extensive list like this. Okay. So, in this class what we are going to do is the first graphical tool we are going to study today here is called as the Pareto diagram. Okay. So, the Pareto diagram is an important tool uh, and the Pareto diagram has quite a lot of aspects out related to it. So, we will talk about what it is. Okay. Uh, so, before getting into the Pareto diagram let us think about why organizations collect data. One of the main reasons for data collection is due to some failure in the system. Okay. Usually, usually failure in the system triggers investigation, investigation. What type of investigation? Finding the cause of the failure finding the cause of failure. Okay. Then how to fix the cause, then how to prevent reoccurrence of the cause, who is responsible. So, these kind of things, okay. these aspects are the ones that triggers the investigation. This is kind of the triggered investigation and the outcomes of the investigations. From there, you use this to make decisions, decision on how to sort out the problem. Okay. Most of the time, failure in the organization occurred due to any of the five M's. The first one is man okay, or human beings, machine your resources, materials, raw materials, other things, money or what you call as finance and method is what we call as the process. Okay. You can think about this in any organization as a set of five dials. Okay. Think about this as the man dial, then is the machine dial or a like kind of a dial what I say it is a regulator kind of a thing. Then there is a materials dial, then you have a money dial and then you have a methods or a process dial something like this. Okay. So, this is your materials, money and methods. If you have 5 dials like these, you can think about changing these dials, okay. changing the dials in the system to change the performance of it. So, these could be your independent variables.
and that results in that would cause some failure in the system which you measure it in some other case. So, when an organization when an organization identifies a process or a method okay as a candidate for improvement why is it a candidate for improvement because it has caused the failure then the first step first step is to collect data on the frequency of failures, frequency of each type of failures or each type of failure. Okay. So, what does Pareto diagram do? Once you collect the data on each type of failure, then the Pareto diagram orders each type of the failure according to its frequency orders in a sense it sorts okay into each type of the frequency and each type of the failure and its frequency so the type of failure and its frequency is being considered as part of when uh, the Pareto diagram is the one that orders each type of failure according to its frequency and then you can visualize how the what are the major causes of failure and how is it impacting that. Okay. So, there is a principle behind Pareto, but before looking into that let us look into this Pareto example. Okay. So, here is a trivial example a simple example that we can work in the class itself we do not need excel or anything to do this, but you can use excel if you want to but a pen and paper would do. Assume that your factory has a CNC drilling machine and it is working below the expectations. Okay. So, this is what the problem is. What is the problem? CNC drill working below expectation. This is a failure. In a, in, a, in a sense, it is a failure because you are not able to produce the amount of product that you want to produce. Okay. So, it is working below the expectations and the management wants to study the cause of it. Why is it? Okay. Why is the, the question is why is the CNC drill not performing? This is the question. Okay. So, that is the cause. This gives the answer to this question will give the cause okay, or the causes there could be multiple cause. Okay. So, what the management did is it wanted to look into all sites of failures and their frequencies and they interested the workers and the workers collected the data. The data is like this okay. there is a defect category and then the value. So, number one defect one of the defect category is power fluctuations fluctuations in the power to the machine and it resulted in six failures. Then the number 2 is the unstable controller, the controller of the CNC. So, this controller means the CNC controller. Okay. The controller is unstable, it has resulted in 22 failures. Then the operator, the person who is operating the uh, machine, okay, because of the operator error, the mistakes committed by the operator, it resulted in 13 failures. Then not being able to replace the tool in the proper time has resulted in 2 failures and other things which could be like failure of coolant, not sufficient coolant, breakage of tool, some un unexpected things uh, which are bunched resulted in 5 failures. So, this is the data that is given to us okay. and using this we will learn how to make a Pareto diagram. So, one of the first things is the empirical rule of Pareto okay. and there is an importance with this and the Pareto's empirical law that what does it states? This law states that in any assortment in any assortment of events 
consists of few major and many minor elements. So, if you start you take any assortment of events okay, take a lot of failure events or whatever it is, it will consist of few major events and many minor elements. Okay. So, the major will be few and the minor will be large in number. It is also known as 80-20 rule, okay, which means 20 percent of or 20 percent of the uh, events result in 80 percent of the issues or majority of the issues are created by minority of the few major events that is what the Pareto rule is. Okay. So, in practice, in practice, okay, because we are practitioners, in practice, typically 2 to 3 elements, 2 to 3 elements will account for, account for more than half of the frequency, more than half of the frequency. Okay. So, what we are saying here is we are not really looking at the 80 20 perfectly as such, we will say that typically 2 to 3 elements in the assortment of the events will account for more than half of the frequency. So, let us see how this actually works out. So, why use Pareto? What is the importance of using this Pareto? Because it helps in finding, helps in finding few vital opportunities, few vital opportunities for major improvements, major improvements from a set of many trivial opportunities, trivial opportunities for minor improvement. So, what we are saying here is you have it will help us to identify few vital opportunities that results in major improvement than from a many trivial opportunities that will result only in minor improvement. So, what we are looking for is the biggest bang for the buck. So, what does that mean is what is the best maximum returns okay? that is what we are trying to do. So, in this case what we are supposed to do is the first thing we need to do we have to look into the data that we talked about. So, we had 5 of these data values and the first thing for us to do it is uh, the step 1 to create the Pareto diagram is to sort the data in the descending order. Okay. So, what we do is step 1 sort the data what data failure data data in descending order. So, what we do here is, so let us make a table out of this. Okay. So, here is the uh, what we call as the uh, failure category and we have the value. So, if we go back we will actually see that the largest descending order means the largest value first. So, this is the largest. Okay. So, then what we do is we go back and we say unstable controller it is 22 that is the largest value. Then the next largest value 
was the operator error which is 13. So, we will say now it does operator which is 13. Similarly, we have power failure which is our power fluctuations operator it was operator error power fluctuations it resulted in 6 issues then others resulted in 5 and then tool improper tool it resulted in 2 failures. So, this is the descending sort. So, we can say descending value ok. And if you sum the total thing it is 22 plus 13 plus 6 plus 5 plus 2. So, summation sum of all observations is equal to 22 plus 13 plus all the way up to 5 plus 2 that is equal to 48 ok. So, there are 48 total defects that were identified. Now, with this the next thing is how do you do the Pareto diagram. So, the Pareto diagram is a graph ok is x axis and the y axis and the x axis you have each of those defect categories being put here. So, we have 5 defect categories 3, 4 and 5. So, the first one is the controller ok, second one is the um, operator, the third one was the power, fourth one was others then the fifth one was tool. So, each one of the category. So, the uh, category of failure goes into the uh, x axis and the y axis is you can think about it as the count or number of failures ok. That is that goes in your y axis. So, it starts at the 0 and let us think about it as the maximum value is 25. So, we will say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 it goes like this. So, then the first observation of the controller failures was up to 22. So, we assume this is up to 22. So, we draw a rectangle here we say this is this value is 22 ok. So, the 22 failures are accounted right here in this one. Then the next one is the operator which resulted in 13. So, somewhere here we draw a line and then we draw a rectangle and this is the 13 of, of the operator failure. Then we have the power failure which was at 6. So, 5, 6 is slightly bigger. So, this is 6, then others was 5, so slightly lower than this ok and the last one was the tool which was 2 of them. So, it is a small rectangle. So, this diagram typically will say that this is the uh, this is the simple Pareto diagram. Now, in this case you remember we had a table and the table had failure cause value. So, we had uh, controller as 22, then operator as 13, uh, power as 6, others as 5 and tool as 2 and we summed all of this sigma was equal to 48. So, if you look into this ok, then the relative frequency. So, here it will be 22 divided by 48 which will give you 0 0.458 ok and this will be 13 by 48 which will give you 0 0.271 you can do the math by yourself the this value 6 by 48 will give you what you call as 
0 0.125, the phi by will give you 0 0.104 and this will give you 0 0.042. And if you sum all of these, the values will come to 1. So, the idea here is that if you look at this, okay, then you can think about uh, uh, this particular fashion. You can, this is one way to do this the count. The other way to do the Pareto is also this fashion. Okay, if you assume it as the uh, cumulated value, we can think about it as the count uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Same thing, your uh, controller, operator, power, others and tool as the 5 factors and you can think about it as your uh, uh, the individual observations going right here. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and maybe somewhere here is the 100, let us put it this way. And so, the controller is 45 or 0.458 which means 45.8, so somewhere here will be the controllers. Okay. So, this is like the 45.8 percent. Then the operator is 27.1 percent. So, that is some place here is the operator which is 27.1 percentage. Then power is 12.5 percentage. So, somewhere here is the 12.5 percentage. The others is the 10.4 percentage. So, it is like little bit less 10.4 percentage and the tool is the 4.2 percentage. Okay. So, something like this 4.2 percentage. So, now if you look in this case, okay, so the uh, this is the 45.8 percent, but if you look at the second one operator, okay, so the uh, controller contributes to 45.8 percentage of failures okay, and then operator contributes to 27.1 percent of failures. Okay. So, if you, you do both of these, it will be 9, uh, 12, 72.9 percentage of failures by both. Okay. So, as we studied or as we looked in the Pareto principle, what did we say? 2 to 3 of events resulting in more than half of the problems. Okay. So, same way if you look into this, you can say that these two guys put together okay, results in greater than 50 percent of the issues. So, for you or for a decision maker, then it will say that okay, the decision will be from here is. So, what are what will be the decisions? The decisions will be number one, replace the controller, controller chip or whatever it is or find a better controller better controller chip. Number 2, train the operator that could be one decision or hire a new operator. Okay. So, these kind of things by looking into this, you can say that by solving these two cases, by dealing with the controller and by dealing with the operator about 72 point or 73 percent approximately 73 percent of the failures of failures can be addressed by dealing with this. Okay. So, this kind of a approach where you can either look in the count. So, here you are doing the count and here you are looking at the frequency or the percentage of the uh, uh, percentage contribution to the failure. Okay. You can think about as a frequency or you want to call it as relative frequency or you want to call it as a percentage of failures, whatever it is. So, the y axis will have that and the x axis will have the category of failures. 
So these two, these are the two ways you can do the Pareto diagram. For most of the, uh, this is done for what you call as typically, mostly done for survey like data, where you use the count and mostly done for, for engineering like systems. Okay. So, in a hotel you might want to find out how many people actually do come. So, this count might matter to them. Whereas, in, uh, in an engineering like system the percentages might matter, the absolute count might not be of much importance. So, depending upon how the systems turn out you end up making the uh, appropriate choice uh, of the making the Pareto diagram. And such a Pareto diagram can be easily made with the help of Excel. You do not need any complicated tools to make this kind of Pareto diagrams. Even in that case, in the worst case scenario, a simple pen and a paper and a calculator will do the trick also. So, I hope that you guys understood the concept of Pareto diagram which helps us to identify the vital, the few vital causes that actually results in majority of the problem and addressing them rather than focusing on the minor ones that actually gives very minimal returns. So, this is where the focus is on the biggest bang on the buck and then identify how to uh, deal with it. Thank you.